Hi, my name is Sanj Kakar. I'm a hand and wrist surgeon here at Mayo Clinic. And I just wanted to spend a few minutes talking to you about an area I've just seen uh, coming from clinic just now called uh, ulnar wrist pain. It's this area right here. And I see a lot of this in my career. And over the last 10 years, I've gone to sort of understand this at a better level to try and hopefully help you if you're having this problem. Now, we classically see this, for example, if you trip and fall. You might be uh, on a bicycle, fall over. Or you may even just be walking over and tripping on the curb on the pavement, injuring your wrist, falling. It can even happen when lifting somebody very heavy. We also see it in a lot of uh, people who play sports. So for example, if you play sport like tennis or golf, you hit a shot that's fat and suddenly you have pain in this part of the wrist. Now most of the times when we have a, an injury, you probably just rest it and ice it and it gets better. But sometimes it doesn't and it can be a real problem for you. For example, if you're lifting, if you're turning, if you're trying to pour a glass of uh, water in, uh, from a jug or lifting a weight and it really catches you and stops you from doing what you want to do, then that's when you sort of start thinking, well, maybe there's something else going on here. And what I've learned over time in speaking to you and learning from you is that the, pe the pain is very specific. You sort of come in and, and, you, and it's sort of two types of pain that patients experience. They either sort of rub on this area here and you may be rubbing in this area. And to me, when it, when it, when it feels sort of from here moving up, that may be like a tendon problem. There's a, a, an important tendon, which is the rope that moves your wrist back and from side to side, called the ECU tendon. But sometimes it's more sensitive than that. And Dr. Berger has taught us over the year the importance of the location of the pain. So if your pain is in this area here, that is very suggestive of an injury of a, an area that we call the TFCC or the ulnar triquetral ligament. It's like a blanket that covers the bone on this uh, side of your wrist. It's that sort of skinny bone, that knobbly bone that you feel. And it's that uh, blanket that covers it that's torn. So you may just have pain when you're lifting, for example, or twisting. Or you may have something called pain with instability when you're lifting and pouring that uh, glass of water. You feel that clunk that's going on. And that clunk is either the bone or that tendon, that ECU tendon. Sometimes you may have a sort of grinding when you're turning a doorknob or something like that and you're feeling this grinding in here and it's basically what we call arthritis. And what is arthritis? Now this joint here is basically two bones covered by this smooth lining called cartilage. We've got this, this model here, this sort of crude model, but what you'll see is that there's these bones here and they're covered by this smooth cartilage lining. So when we rotate or move our wrist back and forth, it doesn't cause pain because it's nice and smooth. Now if one of these surfaces becomes rough, it's like sandpaper rubbing on the other smooth surface, causing pain, and that's typically what arthritis is, is. The beauty of this area is that just listening to your story can help us try and diagnose this. This is often called the low back pain uh, or the black box of the wrist because it can be confusing. But I think over the last 10 years, we've learned and we continue to learn from you and, and from, from medicine about how to best identify the problems, and diagnose and treat them. So your history of how you're telling us where the pain is, is really important. But the clinical examination is critical. As you can see, we have skin here, but under the skin, we have the bones. And the bones are covered by these soft tissues called ligaments, which are ropes that basically keep the, the bones close together. And using our finger, we can easily point and work our way around very specifically and find out what's causing you the most amount of pain. But the sort of aha moment for me in taking care of, of you uh, has been how important the tests are that we get, but they're not 100%. So usually we get x-rays or we get more uh, sensitive studies, such as, for example, an MRI scan, which allows us to look at the soft tissues that cover the bones and join the bones. Sometimes we get a CAT scan or an ultrasound scan. But what I've learned over time is that even though that these tests help us in diagnosing the problem, the critical thing is, number one, what you tell us, number two, what we clinically pick up to try and help delineate the problem that you're having. And, that, and that's an important thing because sometimes when patients will come in, they'll, the, the history will be very classic as well as the examination, but the tests, like, such as the MRI, may be normal. And so again, for me, what I've learned over, over the years is how can we basically confirm the diagnosis and treat the diagnosis? Because there's many things going on. 
And one of the problems may be that you may have multiple problems and if we just treat one, we'll negate to treat the other and you'll still have pain. So we've learned over the years uh, to look at these things. We look at the bone, we look at the soft tissues, that blanket that covers um, this, this bone here. That blanket comes from this bone to this bone and it's called that TFCC. So we look at the blanket, we look at that tendon uh, that is in this area, the ECU, but there's other soft tissues. And we also look at the cartilage. And we put this in our mind in that, do you have one problem? Do you have two or do you have several? And it's important to then tease out from you what's causing you the most amount of pain so we can hone our treatment on that. Now I talked to you about the camera, the arthroscopy. And over time, we've actually made that camera even smaller. It's now about two millimeters. So think about that. That's the equivalent of putting like a needle in your wrist to look at this problem. And what I've seen over years is that we'll have problems with very specific complaints of pain in this area. They'll point right here and they say, doctor, this is where it's hurt. The injection may have helped, therapy may have helped, but they still have pain and it's not going away. And the imaging is so-so, it's not 100%. But by putting that camera in, you can see the problem. And there it is, the light bulb goes off. There's the problem, that's what the patient's been suffering from. And then we can guide our treatment to fixing that. I think that's, that's sort of what the, the major takeaway for me is that I've learned over the years of how to really figure this out. We don't have all the answers by any stretch of the imaginations, but I think we're in a better place than say we were several years ago. Ideally, as a, as a physician, my goal is to get you back to doing whatever you love to do without surgery. And there's many things that we can do. We can use injections selectively, we can use splinting or casting, and we can use therapy. Our hand therapists are really critical in helping us help you getting you back to what you like to do. But sometimes some of you come in with amazing demand. You wanna get back to playing tennis like you did before. You wanna get back to playing golf that you did before. And our therapy gets you back to sort of doing what we do in regular life. Washing our hair, brushing our teeth, going to work, you know, typing. But to get to that next level of play, how do we do that? because your demands may be very different to say my demands. I'm a very average golfer, not very good at all. You may be very good. You may be a great tennis player. I can barely hit the ball. And so, but our levels of getting back is very different. And so we've been fortunate here at Mayo Clinic in that we partnered with the United States Tennis Association to try and help prevent injury, number one, but also tailor your rehab that is very different to say, for example, the other patient. You have very specific demands that the other patient doesn't have. So how do we tailor that? And, and the, the sort of aha moment for us has been when we brought a tennis professional in who's done this for years. He knows the stroke very well. He does it all the time. That's what he does for a living. Well, what we did is what we got him into our lab, which puts sensors on his skin so we can see which muscles are firing in his forearm when he hits a backhand or a forehand. And there's cameras all around the, 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 the lab looking at this and then it breaks down your stroke and the muscles that are firing or not firing to the millisecond. So it then allows our therapists to say, aha, the reason why you may be having a problem with your stroke is because these muscles aren't firing. So if we work on this, we can try and get your kinematics or your stroke to a better level to either prevent injury or more importantly, if you've had surgery and we try and get you back, how do we then use that information to number one, guide your rehab but number two, use that information to try and prevent you from having another injury. Because one thing that we do know is once you've had an injury before, you can be prone to having it again, especially if your kinematics or how you stroke or hit a ball is not how it should be. It's, a, it's, it's an evolution. We certainly don't have all the answers. But as I said, it's a journey. And it's a journey, hopefully, that I've tried to share with you how I've learned over years to try and sort of understand this area better and help diagnose and also treat this because it can be frustrating for you. You can see many doctors uh, who are excellent at what they do and your history and your clinical examination is very suggestive but the imaging is, is normal. It says that you don't have a tear. But actually, as I said, the imaging doesn't give you 100% accuracy of every type of uh, injury that's going on. And here at Mayo Clinic, I think we've learned over the years to try and better take it to the next level to help, number one, diagnose and hopefully treat you and get you back to the lifestyle that you want to lead. Thank you for spending a few minutes out of your day with me on going through this journey. Hopefully I've given you some sort of 
answers to what you may or may not be experiencing. My pager has just gone off now, so I'm uh, going to go and see patients who, like yourself, may be uh, suffering from this ulnar wrist pain to try and hopefully help them get back to what they like to do.